if we lose sight of this uh, ultimate uh, um, uh, reason of, of the crisis, that is the relatively low rate of growth, uh, I think we are going to miss, you know, really um, uh, the most effective way of handling the crisis. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, from Greece to Italy, the unfolding debt crisis in Europe. Italy is the latest country rocked by the debt crisis that's been stalking European economies for more than a year. Now, like Greece, which has been devastated, Italy finds itself struggling to remain solvent. The EU needs to revamp its monetary policies and prepare for tough times ahead, notes senior fellow Domenico Lombardi. This uh, crisis, which is really a crisis of the euro area, is not uh, a national crisis of Greece, a national crisis of Portugal of Ireland, not even of Italy, is really um, a crisis of the euro area that uh, uh, originates from uh, two main reasons. One is a concern uh, from financial markets uh, uh, operators that uh, the euro area as a whole uh, um, is not growing enough to support an increasing pile of uh, public debt. And this is particularly true of some countries of the euro area, Italy being w one among them. And secondly, uh, uh, there's been an insufficient appreciation among uh, European policymakers about the potential for externalities um, uh, generated uh, from uh, being part of a monetary union. This crisis first struck in Greece um, more than a year ago, and Greece has taken austerity measures it has uh, received some bailout monies. But there's still much more to be done, isn't there? The scale of the problems that Greece is facing right now right, is, is really uh, humongous. And I think it discounts really a number of uh, optimistic assumptions that were made at the outset. One certainly being that uh, it would be possible to uh, solve uh, you know, many of these issues in a relatively shorter length of time which has turned out not to be true. Uh, the Greek government, under very difficult circumstances, has been able to implement substantial fiscal adjustment. And yet, in order to implement the second round of reforms, this will necessarily require you know, more time. Uh, there is a commitment from the Greek government to implement a far-reaching program of privatization. But clearly, given the limited capacity of the authorities, this will take time to be implemented. Likewise, a number of uh, structural reforms, which are required to lift the uh, growth of the Greek economy, will also require some time to be implemented and then you know, to see the, uh, the gains uh, um, coming from those reforms. Italy is one of the largest economies in the Eurozone, and it's now beset with financial problems. But because Italy is too big to fail, policymakers will probably be very quick about um, taking action to keep it solvent. These policies, in turn, will help Greece, won't they? The fact that Italy has now been um, affected by the latest wave of the European crisis is going to introduce a fundamental shift in the political dynamics of this crisis. Uh, because Italy is too big to fail, uh, because uh, Italy uh, is a systemic uh, economy of the euro area, um, the euro area cannot afford Italy uh, to fall down because this would have really far-reaching consequences for all the economies of the uh, monetary union. Um, and therefore, this will induce really uh, many actors that have been so far responsible for much of food dragging to be more cooperative and to really uh, make a more balanced assessment uh, that would enable uh, uh, the euro area to really come to an agreement uh, in terms of formulating a more convincing, a more effective response to Greece. Because until the Greek problem is not fixed, we're going to see you know, waves of contagion uh, to other parts of the euro area, Italy being uh, um, the most recent example. Arguably, this crisis has been years in the making. Why wasn't it stopped? Why weren't preemptive steps taken before now? One of the lessons that can be drawn from uh, the European Monetary Union is that the lack of uh, a centralized fiscal authority um, 
has really been at the root of uh, the crisis as we are, uh, as it is unfolding right now. Uh, cent a centralized fiscal authority does not need to be something equivalent to the U.S. Treasury, though. There are various ways in which, you know, you can improve on the current situation. Uh, but certainly the framework that uh, uh, the Europeans have had so far in place uh, has not been optimal because essentially countries would be, uh, would be left free to formulate their own fiscal policies even if they would not implement their, their own uh, uh, commitments, there would be no repercussions, no sanctions, no audits. And I think, you know, you do need some more centralization, some more uh, coordination that should be implemented in a much more credible way uh, in order to reassure markets. And this is uh, one of the reasons that has led the ECB president, Jean-Claude Trichet, to argue for the establishment of a euro, a euro area finance minister uh, that in a way would fill this gap. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.